Hi, this is Erica. Today, I'm going to show you the most unique residential buildings in London, the Barbican Estate. You will find it either ugly and quirky, or beautiful and genuine. You will either love it or hate it. So, what's the story? This 40-acre area in the city of London was basically wiped out by the bombs during World War II. The Court of Common Council made the decision to build a new residential complex here in 1957. The construction work started in 1965 and finished after 11 years. Although built by the Common Council, the Barbican Estate is not a social housing. It was designed for middle and upper class urban professionals and families. At the beginning. All flats were let out at commercial rents by the Corporation of London, and later most of the flats became privately owned due to the 1980 Housing Act. In the early years, many lawyers, bankers, and politicians made their homes here. This is also thanks to its proximity to the financial centre in the city of London. In the 1950s, three young architects, Chamberlain. Paul and Bon won the opportunity to design Barbican Estate, and they proposed a radical plan to transform how people live in the buildings in the city. They wanted to create a utopian city, a futurist city within the city of London, where the residents share the same public space and leisure facilities, where the neighbors had more interactions. As a result. The Barbican Estate became a gigantic residential community, composed of 13 terrace blocks and three tower blocks, that host the homes for over 4,000 residents. There are public gardens, lakes, schools, library, and plenty of cafes, pubs, and restaurants inside the Barbican Estate. In addition, the Barbican Art Centre and Museum of London. Are just at the doorstep. The terrace blocks are seven floors above the podium level that links all the buildings and facilities. This is also the pedestrian route above the street level where I'm walking. The Barbican Estate is a very private residential area. Looking from the outside, the area is a bit intimidating, like a fortress. There is no vehicle access, and even for pedestrians walking past by, the rules are quite confusing and easy to get lost. Why? Well, that's to go, as they don't want to be intruded by a flood of visitors. Some areas are residents only. Of the over 2,000 homes in Barbican Estate, there are over 100 types of flats. Ranging from studio to four-bed apartment, the Barbican Estate is built with concrete, an architectural style known as brutalism. The essence of brutalism is honesty, meaning the building should not hide what it's made of. Some other brutalist architectures in London include the Royal National Theatre, Hayward Gallery, and Queen Elizabeth Hall. Sitting on the south bank. So, does brutalism equal to concrete? The answer is no. In fact, it can be wood or steel. The reason we're seeing a lot of concrete brutalist buildings in London is because concrete was quite cheap in the 1960s and 70s when brutalism became popular. Also, the three architects of the Barbican Estate never claimed themselves as brutalist. The original design of the Barbican Estate contained various architectural styles and materials, including white marbles and colorful mosaic. However, the proposal was shut down by the City of London due to the higher cost. I hope you find the story of Barbican Estate interesting. And if so, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.